uh, Miss Nancy just uh, brought up the, uh, if, if we could uh, if we could get our uh, finances together for the pizza. Uh, remind me right after the service if uh, if everybody would give us five bucks, we'd be able to have our pizza money all together. So uh, how much how much do we usually? This Jerry usually runs after. The, where did he go? Some of us don't carry cash. Yeah, uh, that's that's okay. You can write a check or you can put your <laughs> wedding ring in the. And Jean says she's not going to do it. <laughs> she don't feel led. Amen. But if you would, if you would, we'll right after the service we'll take a little offering for the pizza, and uh, I think it's about seventy-five bucks. Is that about what we spend, Brother Jerry? I think so. About seventy-five bucks. So. Uh, if, I, if you if you could help us right after the service, we'll we'll mark that for pizza money for the for Saturday. That'll help us and uh, that'll help us to make sure that uh, Brother uh, Chandler makes a living salary too. Uh, these evangelists, folks, it's, they've got a very very difficult job. They got to take care of them. Family at home, keep a roof over their family's head, have enough money to spend on gas. What do you what do you figure it takes just to spend on gas to get from one place to another? It's a lot. And uh, we we need to pray for them. Amen. Yes. I buy every payday I'm on, I, I put two hundred on a gas card, a speed speed rewards card, gas card. And that's our gas for two weeks and just one car and we go through that yeah 200 so a hundred dollars a week about 100 a week goes to gas yeah. and, and they don't go anywhere all they go is all the way all they go is to Lorraine and brother John goes out to the airport every day hundred dollars a week just to just to get to and fro and uh, so pray pray for the evangelists it's 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 really it's it's hard on them, and uh, and listen to me, God gave us the evangelists. The evangelists have a job in the church. Yeah. Who would we give the money to? Uh, we're we're going to take an offering. We're just going to take an offering after after service, and then if uh, if uh, if we have uh, too much for the pizza, then we'll just put it toward Brother Chandler's offering, and uh, <laughs> so. Um, pray, pray for that. Pray for that need. Amen. Let's look at the John chapter fourteen. John chapter fourteen and verse thirteen. John 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world shall see me no more, but ye shall see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, help us now to learn a little of the Comforter. Lord, help us to understand you, Holy Spirit, so we speak to you 
so ignorantly. Don't recognize you for who you are. Help us to learn better tonight. <coughs> Help us to leave this place understanding you a little better and grasping hold of who you are in our lives. Quicken our hearts. Give us the words to say that would be true and equitable. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> we say we believe in Jesus and we have faith in God. I think that every Christian does not have a problem understanding God the Father and we have no problem understanding Jesus. Jesus is a, a person that you can touch and you can feel and of course so much has been written about him. We read the Gospels. We saw him born. We saw him in the temple as a teenager, as a 12 year old. Talking with the doctors and the lawyers and they were amazed and how could anybody so young know so much? And we rejoiced in that. That we understood that Jesus is God. <coughs> we look at it in hindsight. They had no idea who this Jesus was. They, they said, how could any 12-year-old know what this kid knows? And, and who, who's this kid been hanging around the temple for three days? <laughs> I'm sure that the scribes and the Pharisees, I'm, I'm sure that uh, well, after they went out to Taco Bell, uh, after the meeting that day, that they just sat around saying, did you hear that Jesus kid? Yes. That, G that, that Jesus made it. I'm telling you, there's something about him. <laughs> Amen. Ain't no, ain't, no, ain't no kid can be like that kid. Right? right? Of course, they probably treated him with a little more respect because at 12 years old, he was a man. Something that our teenagers ought to grasp a hold of a little bit better, shouldn't they? Sure. Our 12 year olds and 13 year olds and 15 and 17 and 19 and 20 year olds want to act like they're eight. Yes. All right? have no realization that they ought to be taking a an active personal role in the church. Yes, sir. They don't get it. Amen. But we understand Jesus. We understand God the Father even though we don't understand God the Father quite as much as we understand Jesus because we read about Jesus and 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 uh, and, and we've got all of God suppose about Jesus but but God the Father he's just a little more aloof Sometimes I get the questions as a pastor preacher what's God look like We read those scriptures in the Old Testament where Moses uh, says, God, I've got to see you. And God says, oh, you can't see me. He says, if you saw me, you'd, you'd just die. So we get a little grasp of who the Father is, don't we? We remember that when he met with God the Father on the, on the mountain, to receive the commandments. We remember the story that he came back down from the mountain and the Bible said that he had to wear a veil over his face because being in the presence of God, his face shone so brightly that the people could not stand to look at him. 
we understand God the Father. Not quite as good as we understand Jesus, but we understand God the Father. We understand that Jesus said to His disciples, the disciple says, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Don't you know me? Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. And so as Christians, we, we understand who Jesus is. We understand who the Father is. But this Spirit, is so spooky, <clears throat> Amen. You, although you address him on a daily basis, you really don't even know you're talking to him. And in fact, you, you'll talk to Jesus the, the Son, and you'll talk to God the Father, but have no comprehension that if you're talking to Jesus the Son and God the Father, you're also talking to the Spirit. Well, they're one in three. I think the Spirit surely must get a little lonely because we don't understand Him. We really just don't understand Him. The reason we don't understand Him is because we've never experienced Him in His fullness. He wants to fill you. He's the one that wants to make you so... He want, he's the one that wants to make you so that when people look at you, they're, they're hiding their faces and saying, I can't take it! Shouldn't that be what the world thinks of us? Shouldn't there be a mystery about us because, because, because we know Jesus Christ the Son and we know God the Father and we talk with God the Father and we talk with God the Son and, and God's Holy Spirit, of uh, the Bible says, ought to fill us. So much that people say, that's strange. Them people are peculiar. Them people don't act normal. We shouldn't be acting normal. The world's out having a good time tonight. Now, I hope you're having a good time. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, I'm having a good time. <laughs> Here. I'm saying, Lord, whoo, wow, this is this is good. This, <laughs> this is better than me. <laughs> what do you know about the spirit? Believe in Jesus and have faith in God. What about the spirit? We need to believe more strongly in Him. We need to depend more on Him. So Dwayne was talking about crossing over Jordan. And what did the Bible say? The Bible said that, that, they, that, the, that the water didn't part until they put their feet in the water. But you see, that's dependence on the Spirit. That's doing that little Napoleon thing that I tell you about, you know. When Napoleon went up against uh, a, 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 a troop far superior to his own, he called for the general of the opposing force and asked the general, 
How would he like his terms of surrender? <laughs> and the general laughed at him and says, Napoleon, we have you outnumbered! <laughs> you haven't got a chance! And he commanded a sentry to come to the door. Napoleon asked the sentry to jump out the window to his death. And he did. The opposing general was aghast. Napoleon said, I've got 10,000 just like you. What would you like for your terms of service? need to do with the Holy Spirit. We need to be trusting our leader. We need to be trusting our guide to such a degree that we're able to step out <laughs> even when we think that our behavior is to our death. because we're trusting the Spirit. Napoleon won the war. He won the battle that day. We can do crazy things if we'll trust the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, I'm not telling anybody to jump out a window, and I'm no Jim Jones here. <laughs> saying, listen, we've got to trust the leader. We've got to trust God's Holy Spirit. Yes. And He can lead and guide and direct us to do things that we would never be able to do otherwise. He's our regenerator. Let's look at Titus chapter 3. Titus. Titus chapter 3 in verse 4. Titus 3 in verse 4. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our regenerator. Can I confess something to you? I've been in the ministry since 1966. Almost 50 years. And i tell you something about how many of you got a battery? You all got a battery? Come on, well, raise your hand if you got a battery somewhere. You all got a battery somewhere, amen? You all got a battery, amen? Now listen to me. You got one in here too. <laughs> Brother Murray's pointing to his ears. <laughs> Isn't it terrible when they go dead? <laughs> the scary thing is it actually speaks to me. <laughs> no, brother, that's the spirit. <laughs> that battery will say, um, what is it? Shut down, I think it is. <laughs> Low battery and then shut down. And he keeps hollering at his wife, cut that out. <laughs> is it a girl or a guy? 
dressed like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is strange. <laughs> uh, amen. How many of you got a how, how many of you have ever had a battery just 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 drain at the wrong time? Let me see oh, Ed, if you've ever had a battery. Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> Ain't that the pits? <laughs> yeah. Then back in the olden days, back in the olden days, we we was all, we always had batteries that were running out. And we, we couldn't keep a battery. Oh, son, you need a new battery. What do you mean I do need a new battery? I, I just got one six years ago. <laughs> son, you, you need a new battery. I always hate winter coming on. You know, you could you could limp that thing through during the summer, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's why they that's why they rate them in cold cranking amps. Amen. <laughs> That winter. It's okay if it hit on the first or the second, you know. But in the middle of winter, if you got past the rrr, rrr, <laughs> you're done, buddy. Open the door. <laughs> but look at what God said that the Spirit will do for us in verse 5. But according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You've got a place to plug in your battery! My wife, she's got a little laptop computer. She's had it way, way too long and, and for the longest time. She, Anytime she'd open that thing up, she'd have to plug it in. The battery was shot. The battery was worthless. Man, you know what it cost to get a new battery? Man. But listen, we don't have to buy a new battery, man, in this business. We don't have to. Listen to me. You, God only gave you one battery, and one battery is all you need. You're rechargeable. <laughs> Amen? That was long before they ever came up with these other rechargeables. Amen? You can get regenerated. By the Holy Spirit. We're saved not by works of righteousness which we have done according to His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The work is never undone. The Holy Spirit will constantly recharge your battery. But you know what? We're like kids, aren't we? We're not like kids, aren't we? Yeah. <coughs> I, don't, I don't need a bath tonight, Mama. <laughs> I'm okay. My my mama was talking to some of us. We lived in a sand we lived in a sand pit, uh, a mine, a sand mine in our backyard, and we grew up. Uh, with about, uh, oh, 20, 30, 40 acres of, of sand and big piles of molding sand. It's, you could run it through your hands, just like uh, out on the beach, and it's just nice yellow sand. And we'd get out there into them sand piles all summer long, and we would come home every night just filthy dirty. You know, so dirty that the that the, the little sweat pores, you know, have little circles around each one of the pores and you look like you had chicken box. And playing in that dirt all day. Sand get all over all over the floor. My mama had hardwood floors, but she didn't have any finish on the hardwood floors. <laughs> The 
Holy Spirit is our regenerator. And His work is never... never done. He's continually recharging us. But to get plugged in, you've got to be willing to get plugged in. Amen. There's times when he's telling you you've got to come to the shop. Amen. And you're kicking and screaming. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because we contend with our flesh. Sure. And our flesh likes to be dirty. And our flesh likes to do the wrong thing. And the flesh likes to have his own way. And the flesh hates regeneration. But he's our regenerator. When you wake up in the morning, it's him that will guide you in all truth, the Bible says. We've got to listen. Not only do we have to listen, but we have to follow. If we expect to be regenerated, if if we don't, if we don't get regenerated, then then you know what's going to happen? We're going to our battery's going to run down, and our battery's going to become worthless, and 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 we're going to become worthless to God the Father. Now He didn't save you to become worthless. What good is it for us to be some little statue on his on his cupid doll? Shelf, Amen. What what good is it for us to just be uh, somebody that got saved? He says, "Well, I got one saved here. I'll just put them up here on the shelf, and people can look at them." No, that's not what we're. That's not what he saved us for. He saved us to serve. He saved us uh, for a function, and and he's given us a responsibility as a child of God, and we need to be searching for that responsibility every day, and we need to get our battery plugged in with God, the Holy Spirit. Spirit, so we're able to function and do the job that God has called us to do. Amen. He's our regenerator. Well, my battery wasn't going dead. It was always the generator that got <laughs> shot. Amen. That was back in the old days when we had generators. We have alternators now. I don't. I do not understand the difference between an alternator and a generator. But they. But they serve the same function. But they're, they. They call them something different. So they must be different. Amen. <laughs> they charge you more for them. Amen. They do. They do. <laughs> but we need that regeneration. We need to be praying every day, saying, God, charge me up. Don't let, don't let my battery run down. God will recharge you in everything that you do. God, God can help you to get over a problem on your job. You got bad help at your job? Just about everybody has bad help somewhere. You wives cut it out. <laughs> we all we all got something something somewhere that's just not functioning the way we want it to. Amen. But God can get you through it. God can get you over it. Because He's given you His Spirit that will regenerate you, that will help you to function even when everything else is broke. You can function in a broken system. That's one of the reasons that they look at you. Say, <laughs> look at that! <laughs> everything else is falling apart. Everything else is busted down. 
and there's the Energizer Bunny. Just keeps on ticking. <laughs> One picture. Amen? That's the Spirit of God that's able to do that. And that's why people will look at you and say, that's peculiar. That's strange. How is it that that part's still working and everything else is broken down? I like that. <laughs> that's something to... That's a, that, that's something to behold. Amen? I don't know how it's doing it, but I, I sure like it. Why is it still running? Because we don't run on their batteries. And we don't need their generator. got our own regenerator it's constantly working on us if we will allow him to Amen. I got too much here I'm going to sorry that I've told you what my limitations are. Have you done that? Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. What, what a stupid thing for the creation to tell the creator what your limitations are. He, he built you, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Every day, we, we refuse what he says. I'll tell you what, when I was in the service, I was amazed what I was able to do. I really was. Because my instructor knew my limitations better than I did. Amen. And dear friend, listen to me. I promise you this, God knows your limitations better than you. Our responsibility is not to tell God what our limitations are. Our responsibility is to plead God the Holy Spirit to regenerate us and to make us exactly what He wants, how He wants, when He wants, where He wants, in the way He wants. That could be another seven point sermon, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Out we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to write that one down. Amen. Somebody take my notes. <laughs> take his notes. Amen. He's our regenerator. Let's stand and pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we pray that tonight we've got to know you just a little bit better. I truly stand in awe of what's been said tonight. I pray that everything that's been said is in what you've had a desire to be said and heard. Lord, as we leave this place, might we leave with the understanding that you are our permanent regenerator. That you can help us to get over 
our problems and burdens and heartaches. She can help us to get past this flesh that constantly wants to break down and fall by the wayside. Help us, Lord, to give it up. moving for your service. Lord, I don't want to come to a point in my life where I have to sit on a shelf. And Lord, that's my prayer for this your people also. Lord, I don't want any, anyone hearing the sound of my voice to ever hit the judgment seat of Christ. have to be examined as they're taken off the shelf. Lord, I want to be at your judgment seat. Just coming off the battleground. Accomplishing in victory what the Holy Spirit empowered me to do. Might that be the cry of our hearts tonight. Bless us, Father, as we leave this place. Holy Spirit, go with us and guide us. Might we be more willing for your guidance than we've ever been before. Pray that this week we would acknowledge your presence more than we've ever done before. For it's in Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. If you Amen. have a need tonight, come. Just carry a while with that.